Hey guys, and welcome back to the cafe once again. So today we're going to play around with these double ended watercolor brush pens. And I found these a long time ago in a little home decor shop. I actually found a different brand. Here's this brand right here. And the brand I found, the price was right. I was in the town next to mine waiting for my food. And I decided to look in this home decor shop and there they were, watercolor brushes. What a weird place to find them, huh? So uh, the price was right and I went ahead and grabbed them and I fell in love with them and I gobbled up that whole set. I dried them out pretty quick and used them all up. So I had to get this set. Now what we want to do today, what I want to do rather, is uh, I just want to make a few little cards like we talked about in the um, collaging with uh, copyright free artwork video at the end of that video. I went ahead and made these just to play around and uh, get my feet wet again because it's been a while since I've done this kind of artwork. So for this one, and I want to use the same colors today. I used this brown, orange, and yellow ochre on this little card here. And I'm pretty sure I used this brown. I did put them all away, but I put them all away in order. So I'm pretty darn sure I'm right. And then for the green one, look at how fun this is. This has so much texture going on in it. I used this dark hunter green, this mossy green, and this bright green here for this card. And then I just did a little bit of doodling. So we're going to do cards similar to these today. And then this one, I just did a really light and a really dark gray. And I got a lot of blue in this card here. So I've got my watercolor paper laid out and in that video I had talked about these really cool envelopes I get. So let me move this aside now and real quick let's talk about this. You get a, a big brush uh, pin end and a fine liner. Here's the fine liner and I find that I have a bit of trouble getting this to blend which can be a good thing. So if you want more detailed outlining you can use these pins again and just not add water. And then there's your big brush tip and you can lay down a lot of color very quickly with that big brush tip. So that's what you get with this set and it was pretty affordable affordable. I waited until I got a 40% off coupon. I've noticed that Michaels has gotten oh a bit stingy with their coupons. They used to do 40% off all the time. Now they do 20% off all the time and I've never seen the pens go on sale and it just could be because I'm there when they're not on sale. I don't really see it in the advertisements very often so you'll just have to you know see what you can come up with. Now these envelopes are a really weird size. I'm just going to show you They're long and rectangle and this is how they look. They're very cool. Now this is the only card in Hobby Lobby. I get these cards at Hobby Lobby. This is a paper studio product and this does go on sale every two to three weeks in Hobby Lobby. So uh, if you have access to them and if you don't, of course, you can make your own envelopes. This is just a nice long rectangle. But the weird thing about these is they don't come with their own cards. I had to cut my own cards to fit these and so I have a few of those here with the envelopes so you can always have that option too and then let me tell you real quick. Ah need to get a better ruler in here. So these um, unfolded come out to be, oh my goodness, I guess that's, okay. 
So seven and an eighth by eight and a half is what these cards ended up being that I cut out for these. Now I cut some watercolor paper here and I cut sections to fit just inside of this here. And I don't remember the measurement for this, but you just want to make it fit nicely and give yourself however big of a border you want. Now, what I've got here is I've got a 9 by 12 piece of Canson mixed, or Canson, excuse me, Canson watercolor paper. And then I've, I've had enough room for one, two, three cards. And then I'll have a little left over here and a little left over here in the end. I also grabbed my water because sometimes you want to use a little brush when doing this kind of artwork to have a little bit more control but I like to use my water brush for this kind of artwork with the brush markers. I've also gone ahead and grabbed my very much loved, very beat up fan brush so that we can do some spatter. There's a few different ways that you can use these watercolor brushes and we're just gonna breeze through these quite quickly so that I can show you what can be done with them. Now these colors, I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush tip just to get the color laid down. Also for the cards after I get them cut apart we're going to edge them with a bit of black soot distress oxide. That's just the one I had handy and then I've got my tape gun here just to attach them to the cards. So uh, a little bit on these pens really goes a long way but we'll go ahead and get some real color in here so that you can see and then maybe we'll do the gray one a bit lighter. These are a new love of mine and the reason I really fell for these big time when I first found them is I could paint in bed. <laughs> I love to do artwork in bed and as you know there's we can't do every single thing in bed that we want to do. It's really hard to like collage in bed, you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, I should have done this right to left. I'm left-handed, but we'll go ahead and work with it. So now all I want to do is take my water brush and squeeze out a few drops of water and then just start activating all of this beautiful color and they will blend and mesh together. And these pens are really incredible because you can layer them you can paint wet on wet like I'm doing right now and you can uh, do draw with them. You can do so many amazing things and I will show you. We'll go through uh, what I know about them and I may even not know everything of course but um, I want to show you all the things that I have found about these pens. I use them a lot, so I'm familiar with this product, with this uh, art medium. And uh, yeah, it's just really fun. So see how dirty my water was when I just laid it down? Your water will get dirty on these. And now that we're going to switch to a different card, I definitely want to clean my brush up. Got a lot going on on my table yet again. I am always constantly reusing my paper towels. So you just want to squeeze a few drops. Look at how concentrated the color is. And something I like to do when I'm cleaning my brush, when I'm painting, is to have extra watercolor paper handy so that I can clean off my brush and offload this color onto another piece of paper to not waste it. I just wasn't thinking about that when I got everything ready. So look at how beautiful this is already had to get a little bit of something something out of there so now I dirtied up my brush again darn it now I'm going to take my fan brush while this is still a little damp and I'm just getting a bit of water here I don't want it too terribly wet but enough to get a little bit of spatter and look at that you get to instant results on that water spatter 
Isn't that beautiful? So we'll let that dry for a minute while we work on the next one. And the next one, I wanna do the grays. So we'll do, I like to start off with the dark and I have a tendency when I'm doing this kind of artwork, like making these little color cards, um, I have a tendency to put the darker on the outer edges just to kind of give it some darkness around the border. And you don't have to, of course. And that's a lot of color right there. Look at how dark this one is. So, of course, if you want your cards to be really pale and really light, and I'll do a lot less here. I'll just throw some of this in. Um, just use less color because it really does go far. These are amazing. So I'm going to double check, make sure my brush is clean. You definitely can taint a painting if you don't clean your uh, brush up. Okay, here, let me do this. Try to do this right-handed even though I'm a southpaw so you can kind of watch this one over here. Now when I put these drops down, that was already really wet, so it hadn't um, had a chance to set up yet. And you do get tighter drops if you let your uh, brush work dry a little bit more before you put your drops down. It's a bit tricky to paint right-handed. I'm not used to this. <laughs> Now you can also just barely squeeze your watercolor brush and get your just your bristles the slightest bit wet. Now they don't always, this has happened to me a few times, they don't always break up perfectly. But usually when I do watercolor cards like this, I draw over them and I add layers of color. So I never really worry about that. But see how you've got some lines in here? That does happen on occasion. So it's just something to be aware of. It's, um, I'm sure it has something to do with the, I think the lower quality of paper you use the more you're gonna see that. I think the higher quality of paper, uh, the less you would see that, of course. So um, you can just play around with what you've got and see what you get. And you'll see this a lot more with the fine tip edge for sure. So it de definitely happens with that. So I'm just wiping it off. I'm using magic tape today. Uh, EH Electric Hen turned me on to that and I'm so grateful. I've been using it ever since she suggested it to me here on my channel. So now look at that lovely color. I should have got up. You know what? I have a little scrap here. So I'm just going to drop this dirty water onto this paper and spread it out a bit. Look, at it's really pale. But that'll be a nice tiny bit of color there. You can barely see it. But at least this way you don't waste your watercolor. I like to use everything as much as I can. Look at how beautiful and pale that is. Now I'm sure, I, I, would, I would bet money if I was working on arches that I would not have had this happen right here, but it really is okay. And I'm gonna show you a few ways to mess with that. So not to worry. Let's go ahead and here, see how this drop is right here. I've got this drop. And if you get drops like that and you want a more defined look with them, just come in and uh, splot that with a tissue or a paper towel and you'll get a really um, defined watermark instead of the cauliflower watermark. So there's a couple different ways. Let's do a teeny tiny bit. So this is more set up now. It's still not dry, but it's drier than it was. So I'm just gonna put a few drops down here to show you how you can do that. Now you wanna let that sit for a second and we'll go ahead and lay down our color here for the third card. I 
I like, I'll put a little tiny bit of this brown in the middle. I really like a lot of orange in the mix. So I'm going to just come in. These pens are pretty juicy. So uh, they, they're, um, they're, they have a long life. I have been using these a lot and they're still incredibly juicy. I do try to protect my tip and not go over, um, go over one color with the other. Sometimes of course I miss and I do it, but I try not to just, just to protect my brush tip here. Okay, so that has set up long enough. Now you wanna take a paper towel, a relatively clean one. <laughs> This side's pretty clean right here. And then just go ahead and dab that down and look, then you can get those really uh, stark little dots. Let me bring in a little and show you closer. It's so funny, I'm always worried you can't see. I've got this tape to my table. Here's those fine and you can get so much texture with just a little spatter and look at the difference and that's just because of the dry time like we did the cauliflower ones right away and then uh, we did the other ones after it set up a bit. So you have so many ways to make texture with these brushes and salt does work as well. So just about anything you can do with straight up watercolor, you can do with uh, watercolor brushes. I even have a bit of salt here. That's already too dry. We may do some salt. I didn't plan on that for the demo, but I may throw some in here. You definitely have to let everything dry completely when you do the salt. So now that the gray is completely dry, I'm just going to go ahead and do this lefty. Color this one in lefty. And I love a broken edge. When I pull the tape, I'm going to get a tiny bit of a broken edge right over here. But for the purposes of the video, I'm really trying to overlap the tape so that you can see the beauty and see the defined edge once we take the tape off. And I'll be sure to do that here with you today. We're going to just. Uh, cut them down to and ink the edges just so you can see my process. It's, you know, it's nothing that hasn't been done a million times here on the YouTube. But it's fun to watch other people's processes. So let's say you get a little too much water like right here and you don't like it and um, it, it's too faded. That's okay. All you want to do is let this dry and then you simply add more color. That's what's so beautiful about these. Now a word to the wise, you can absolutely overwork your watercolor um, artwork with these brushes just as easily as you can overwork it with actual watercolors. So, you know, watercolor is one of those, that's I think probably the hardest time I have with this medium is that I um, have to know when to quit messing around with it because it really doesn't like to be overworked. So now that this gray is dry, I want to show you something else really, really cool. And we're going to probably have to do it here on the green one. Let's get some more cauliflower on this orangey one over here since it's wet. We'll just throw down a little bit and that's the tiniest bit of water right there. And look at all the amazing color. I love watercolor because you can sit here and watch it do this right before your eyes. It's such a magical medium. So let's go ahead and do this next step. We'll do it on the bright green over here and I want to use the yellow because yellow is a harmonious color with the green and you want to use the brush tip again. And I'm just going to lay this down like you would any kind of a um, 
water-based marker and I want quite a bit and I want it quite dark just like that and I don't want dog hair in it <laughs> everything I do has dog hair in it oh, it's okay I love my doggies okay so now oh just spilled a bunch of water on the edge of my paper good job getting a little wild over here So now I want really a lot of water. I'm going to dip this in here and I'm not going to let any of it off. And I really want to have this quite juicy. We'll set that there so you can see. And then I've got this. This is still quite wet, so I don't want to lay it down, but I'm going to put this here to protect it. This is just an old book cover. I'll use anything for a mask and as you can see, I'll use pretty much anything for a palette too. So I'm just coming in with this bright yellow color and throwing down some spatter on this. And as this dries, it's really amazing that you can see this color very prominent. I'm hoping you can see it already. I can see it very brightly, but the, what the monitor picks up and what I see are not always the same thing because my face is closer to it. So now this is already starting to set up and dry here, and I want it a little bit more dry to be able to uh, put some more color down on it, which I definitely want to do. Now, I got wild here, and I took up so much of my plate. I'm going to leave a little of that yellow, clean my brush. Let's go ahead and add some of this dark charcoal gray to the middle one the same exact way just so that we can see you can use a color that you've already used in your work and uh, it's beautiful it comes out really beautiful so i'm not going to be too concerned about getting gray on the green just because i don't have a lot of choices everything's wet and I'll just spatter it close in. And I'm going to hit it a lot. Normally, I wouldn't do such a uniform spatter. I would just do a little here and a little there. But uh, I don't want that gray. Oh, and I got a drop of it. There, I wiped it out. <laughs> I don't want it in the orange and brown. Okay, I'm going to let this totally dry so that we can move on to the next steps. While these are still drying, I wanted to show you, here is how dark this color ended up being. And this was just from me cleaning my water brush out. And um, I got so much color. So I thought we would have a little tidy bit of fun here. And I have this, let me make sure it's clean. I'm just gonna use paper towel. Since I have this little chunk of scrap, paper right here. I want to do the tiniest bit of yellow and green. I'm literally going to try to just do the tiniest bit of color and I'm using this beautiful moss green. It's a little bit more intense when you get it laid down. So I just want to uh, show and even that's quite a bit of color but it's not really much. I just want to show you that you can really get a beautiful pale wash of color if you if you go easy on your uh, markers. Kind of having to get in here and scrub those pen marks out, and they are coming out. Who says I'm not a right-handed painter? <laughs> not a very good one, that's for sure. Okay. So the brush marks came out pretty well. But look, even that is has a lot of pigment to it. I just keep getting 
stuff in my work today. Yuck. Darn it. Let's say I want to even add a little bit more water. I've got, I've added that dirty green water in and this is where you want to be careful. So I'm already starting to overwork it. So I want to leave that alone now. And then I've got a lot of these drops and they're starting to dry now. And I want to keep that color in. So I'll go ahead and help this along. All right, so these are mostly dry. And isn't this lovely? You can get the palest of washes with these watercolor brushes and they will really last you forever. I am absolutely in love with these. So they're great for appointments. If you're out on the go and you have to sit anywhere and wait, just grab some watercolor paper and your brushes and a brush pin and a couple paper towels and you are literally good to go wherever you're at. So you can really see the yellow in this one here, the drops we did. And then the most prominent thing, let me bring you in a bit. The most prominent thing about these uh, dark gray drops is they did end up light in the middle and I did not pad them because had I done that, we would have ended up pulling all the pigment like right here but they ended up with really that dark, smoky, charcoal gray rings around them, which is just so beautiful. So now I wanna add some more yellow spatter to the orange one. I love the brightness of this yellow color. It kind of, um, if you use the lighter color of what you're doing with your work, it will really bring a brightening effect if you use your lighter color for spatter or for more painting or for whatever you want. I have to watch these holes. I'm not paying attention very well to that. So because this one has yellow in it as well, let's go ahead and I might as well do it on this side too. Let's go a little wild. That way I don't have to worry. I wanna get some yellow spatter on here. This one is very dry. So if you do your work and you have to walk away for a few days or whatever and it becomes bone dry, it's no problem at all. You can come back in and add your spatter. And if you add the spatter wet, and I should have done that to one of these and I didn't, I apologize. But as you can see, if you add a spatter to a wet piece, you will just get more of the color. If you add the colored spatter, you'll get more cauliflowers, but you'll get them in the color that you spatter it with. So you can do such amazing stuff with these watercolor brushes. Now this one is dry. This one is dry. I want to just do some other mark making here. Let's use this fine tip end and I'm just going to do some like weird little marks and I'm going to color these in pretty dark. The fun of these is the layering to me. I, these, the, everything about these is fun to me though, really. I just love them. Let's do a little wider one here. I'm not very good at straight. <laughs> it's even been a while since I've had coffee too. Now, if you wanna hurry it along, you can just grab that brush tip and get in there with it. So, if you want to do more detail, tighter, little lines, let's do a tall, thin one. Then you've got this nice, uh, detailed, chiseled brush end. It's not chiseled. I don't know why I said that. It's not chiseled. But it's a tighter uh, a tip, nib, whatever you call it. Okay, so we'll do that. That's almost black. I went over it so many times. And then let's do a couple up here in this color. You can do beautiful botanical drawings over these, which we're going to do some of that in the near future. And uh, let's do 
I want to do a few little rectangles like I did on the other card. So I'm just going to draw these out and kind of make different shapes. Maybe we'll throw a square in here. And then um, I'll come over here with the brush tip and color them in. You can leave these like this, but I think it's, I don't think it's near as attractive as it is when you go ahead and activate them. So I've got a small round brush here and I'm going to get it nice and juicy, but I don't want so much water that I can't control the brush. And I'm just going to lay down a row of water in each one of these just to kind of activate them a bit. And once these are all dry, you can come in. This one's going to be tricky. Uh, you can come in and do all kinds of pin work with your black felt tip permanent markers, with your white gel pins. You can do so many amazing things. Today, I'm really concerned with just turning you on to these if you haven't used them or reminding them reminding you of them if you have used them and haven't used them in a while because it's such a magical wonderful art medium to use and it travels so easy and you can paint in bed oh my gosh you guys you can paint in bed if you're anything like me that's a big deal <laughs> I, there's not very many projects I can do in bed. I like to watch YouTube videos and um, uh, look at art books when I'm in bed. So look, now you get that really beautiful painterly look. So we'll let that dry a little bit. And then let's do real quick, let's just do a yellow spiral. I have in this one. I did this spiral and then I did dots and I went over it with black and I didn't really like it. And then I put a spiral in this diamond up here and I did some fun little pen work to this card here. Let me back you up a bit. I hope you were able to see everything I just did. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I get out of frame and I'm always on my own case about it. So this got a little bit out of where I wanted that to be. And now I'm making it even worse. So you want to be really careful. And I like messy artwork, so that's okay with me. So I want to take, if I can find it, I have lost my yellow pen. There it is. I want to take the brush in and we'll just go right here. And I'm going to make kind of a big spiral. Now, of course, you want to wait until everything's dry to be able to do that. So I made it pretty big so that I can get in there with my shaky hand here. Jeez. I'm just not as good at working tight as I used to be. And it's okay. I don't normally work tight anyway. So it's all right with me. It's a little disappointing, but it kind of has to be all right, doesn't it? If that's the way it is. So now that I've activated that, it has shown up. And the beauty of it is I used such a light color that uh, it, it's not blatant and it's not in your face. It's nice and subtle. So you can do blatant, <clears throat> excuse me, in your face markings, or you can just do really subtle markings that push back into your work. So this is pretty dry already. And let's say, so I just want to come in and make that look like a rectangle. I'm just using a regular uh, fine ultra fine point Sharpie. 
So I can come in and just draw my little rectangles and then put that mark in there anyway, which is kind of fun because it gives you more of a painterly look. So uh, if you have this problem that I have where you struggle to um, stay steady and you go outside of your lines, don't worry about it. Just um, be cool with yourself and be easy on yourself and let it happen because I think it's even beautiful just like that. And then you can come in and just make some really weird marks here. Now on this bright one over here, look at the yellow that happened. I'd like to take some of this orange and spatter this with orange so that you can see the difference. I'm just going to put a black line down each of these just for fun. Now I like to make art cards like this and you can go wild. I'm not going to today because I don't want this video to take forever, but um, you can just go so wild and do so much beautiful pen work like these. I did quite a bit of pen work here on these. Here's the bottom of this. I did the little Greek key style. And then I did some more rectangles up top. So you can uh, have just the time of your life putting in drawing. And if you want to see more videos where we do this, maybe I'll break them into two parts and let me know what you think. I could do a uh, part one where we do uh, watercolor backgrounds. And then part two could be mark making on top of the watercolor backgrounds. So this was fun. I just did a few rectangles and I left all the texture wide open to be able to see it. And um, just some little line work. And let me tell you, if you're not into this style and you don't like this look, that's fine. I, you know, I don't like everything I see other artists doing either, but the point is, is that you get the technique and then you adapt it to what you like. I like weird little abstract mark making, and I hope you do too, but it's fine if you don't. It's absolutely fine. I want to do some orange, like I said over here, just to show you how beautiful you can get with a really intense color that's not already a part of your artwork. This is all dry. Look at how beautiful our little spiral came out. It's very uh, pushed into the artwork and it's, it's just, you can really go far with these brushes. I'm so in love with them. You know what I want to do? That's so kind of reddish. I just want to come in with a little bit of the brown. Let's mix it all together so that it's a little bit more burnt orange. I love burnt orange. It's one of my favorite colors, that rusty style. And let's go ahead and hit this one too while we're at it. And if some gets on that too, it's fine. Let's say you want bigger drops. Just add a bit more water to your mix and you'll get bigger drops and you can hold it closer to your art too. I'm gonna come in and throw some on that too. I should have covered my gray, but I got lucky. So with this little gray over here, while we're watching that dry, I can come in and make some just fun little lines in here, color that in. You could really have a good time with these and do whatever you want. It's such a fun therapeutic thing to do. And another thing you can do if you're into this kind of artwork, you can paint your watercolor backgrounds. Let's say, you know, sometimes I have doctor's appointments and that's a bummer. I've had some health issues in my life and I kind of, I've got to apologize to you guys. I took a couple weeks off because I was not doing so great, but I'm doing great now and I'm back. But um, sometimes I have to go to the doctor 
like we all do. And I take my stuff. But what you can do is you can get a bunch of your backgrounds prepared and then you can take a, a handful of pins of different width pens with you and go ahead and do some drawing if you're waiting for a doctor's appointment or any kind of appointment or if you want to just go outside and get fresh air and paint and draw while you're outside this is the perfect medium to do it so I'm going to one more thing I want to show you real quick that I did grab that I told myself not to forget and I almost forgot. I've got these metallic paint set here and there's two rows to this thing. Let me see if I can get it apart. It kind of gives me grief. Okay, so you get all the, oh my gosh, Corey. I am so sorry, you guys. Okay, oh, I'm not quite a hundred percent yet. So please be patient with me. I appreciate it greatly. So here's all the colors you get with this set. These are all metallic watercolors. Very beautiful, very, very beautiful colors. And this is from, um, la, 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 la. this is from Modern Masters from Hobby Lobby. Now I have a few of the golds doubled up because I got rid of some of the colors that I wouldn't ever use and I doubled up on all the golds because I love the gold. So that's why this looks like this. So yours will look different when you buy it, just so you know, okay? So now I dropped my fan brush. Let me see if I have another one sitting here. I do. I've got this other fan brush sitting here and I'd like to add some, let's do, some gold spatter to the green one and I'm just going to go ahead and activate it with the brush. I prefer to activate my watercolors like this with a squirt bottle but it's okay and now um, the, the whole point of me showing you this is that you can mix all your watercolors. You can mix your brushes, you can mix your pans, you can mix your tubes and they all work beautifully together. So I'm going to get this quite wet so I could really throw down some gold here. Okay. So now you can add the beautiful shimmer of your metallics in with the rest. And I greatly apologize for my framework. I really have to get better about that. It's always been something that I've struggled a bit with. So thank you so much for being patient with me. I'll go ahead and get this dry and we'll cut them apart and do the cards. Okay, so I just heated up my tape and you really have to like heat it and then instantly pull, but we'll do our best here. It'll be fine. I love the magic tape. That's one of my favorite suggestions that I've gotten from you guys. And I've gotten some really good tips over the years and I love it. It's such a great community we have here. I, okay, it's coming along nicely. So I did really um, strong edges with these watercolors. And I got a couple organic. I prefer this organic look like right up here and down here and a little bit here. But for the video, I really wanted to just make a nice clear defined edge so that you guys could see both really. I'm glad I got some of this in here. I wasn't really thinking about it at the time. <laughs> now look at this. You can get such a magnificent look with a darker, more intense color that's not part of your background. The, the, it's just endless. And then look at the gorgeousness of these colors. These colors in these pens are so rich and so just completely glorious in my opinion to borrow a word from Froyle glorious <laughs> here's the gray one they are really really stunning and rich and then here's that shimmery gold 
on top of the green. Hope I'm not making you dizzy. I get dizzy over stuff like this, so I try to hold stuff still. But I want you to be able to see that shimmer. It really came out lovely. There it is. So sky is the limit. You can mix all of your watercolors. I love that. Same thing with acrylics. I'm not an oil paint artist, so I know nothing about oil. But uh, I do know a lot about watercolor, and I know a lot about acrylic. And I just love that with these mediums, you can mix brands and different kinds and they all work beautifully so let me I've got my little register marks here I don't always hit them I try I do my best <laughs> that's why I love loose artwork and loose painting um, I used to be really into a lot of detail I love detail too but I find that it's a much bigger challenge for me now to be able to accomplish uh, really detailed work. So I, um, you know, I've adopted more of a looser style of work just to accommodate myself and to make my life easier because when I'm not having fun, with artwork when I'm having frustration I've just grabbed my little eraser because I did miss a little bit um, then I'm not you know it, what's the point if you're not having fun I do this to have fun and to relax and this is my therapy artwork is it's my best friend in the world really to tell you the truth i can always turn to artwork and i do such different kinds of it all the time that um, i really get to explore and experience so much different stuff and i'm always on my own case about oh corey you really need to get your channel together and be more focused but here's the thing about that, guys. I'm going to set this aside. This is a great little piece, starter piece for a nice little like botanical or something on it later, right? And then, oh, here, let me show you this too. So here's how our little other scrap piece came out. So, you know, nothing goes to waste. But what was I saying? Gosh darn it. I do that to myself so much. Um... Oh yeah, I do a lot of different kind of artwork and I'm going with black soot and I'm going really just on the edge. I don't, I want to try to stay away from coming into the work itself. But uh, you know, that's who I am. I do a lot of different styles. I can tend to get bored if I'm having to do the same thing and I get bored with it, then again, I'm not having any fun. So I, I hope you guys are into the wide array of stuff I do here on my channel. And with every artwork I do, this is kind of funny, there's that one. Um, I, uh, I always like get into this mindset of, oh, I'm never going to do anything else. Oh, and part of the reason why I'm using black, by the way, guys, is because I always do pen work on my watercolors, and I usually do black. I do a lot of black on my artwork, like the gray one here. And so it really makes your stuff pop to have black pen work in your art and then have this nice little black edged border. So that's the reasoning behind this. But yeah, I love to do all different kinds of stuff. Now this is perfect for some pen work here and I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the black even though it doesn't have any black. But you know, I also like it just the watercolor itself, just the beautiful texture. You get this abstract little piece. And a lot of my cards, I prefer to not put sentiments on my cards. So I don't even know if you could really say that I make cards because I don't like the sentiments. I like art cards that you can put in a frame and hang on the wall 
and have your little sentiments and your little message on the inside of the card. So now here's what I like to do, and we'll just do one to speed this along. Let's do the gray. So now I've got my little insert that I uh, cut from my envelope, and then I've got my tape runner here, and I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, I, this is heavy watercolor paper, so I like to use enough tape to really hold it down. And then I'm just going to eyeball this to get it centered. Now you can scan your work, and you want to sign your work for sure. Always, always sign your work. So I'm going to throw in a little signature down here. You can scan this. And then you can give away the original or you can make prints of this so that you're not giving away your original artwork. So just so you know, and I know I'm singing to the choir. I'm really good at singing to the choir. So here's all the ones I've made. And I'm looking at my monitor to make sure you guys can see. Let's put them together. I'll just overlap a little bit. And then, of course, this isn't done yet. It's just, well, it could be done. I shouldn't say it's not done yet. And then here's this little beauty here with the spiral. I love the subtlety of this. I put dots on this one, and I didn't like it at all. And then I went over it with a pen, and you can still see the dots, and I'd like to even go over it some more. So this is just some very quick, easy line work I did on these. Nothing um, fancy or big, and I don't let myself think about it. I just start making marks, and then I, I, I'll block out stuff like this here so that I have an opportunity to make the line work inside the blocked out colors. So I love to do the color blocking. And like I said, you know, if you're not into this style, that's totally fine. Take these techniques and adapt them to what you love to do. And I am so glad you stopped by today. And I'm back now. And I'm hoping to stay back and do all kinds of great stuff. We've got um, the rest of the collages are coming along. I'm done with them. It's just a matter of you seeing them. And um, I hope you're enjoying those. And hit the like and hit the subscribe for me. And let me know if you want to do more of these because we can break them down into watercolor backgrounds, which are really, really exciting to do all on their own. Look at this one. It's so lovely. And then we can do another video on um, mark making and we can do a few sets of those videos too if you're into it. I surely am. I love watercolor. I love watercolor pans, tubes, and brushes. But look at this. Can you imagine if you've never used brushes before, look at the magic you can create with watercolor brushes. So I'm so glad you stopped by and I will see you real soon and be sure to let me know if you want to see some more like this. I'll see you next time. Have a great day.